Uh, good morning, everyone. I uh, uh, my camera has some problems, so I'm gonna not gonna show my face today. Um, we uh, uh, it's interesting that uh, uh, we didn't submit much of the we didn't submit uh, recording uh, last week. I think it's not because we didn't have the meeting; it's just because it, we got into a heated debate that then we forgot to record. <laughs> but anyway, let's not forget this time. So let's uh, get started our meeting. Um, so uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, good to see you again. And uh, uh, let's talk about uh, the schedule that we have, because we really want to have a new ETP um, main night by early next, next year, hopefully by February, and we have a schedule. So we have a list of um, um, milestones, uh, just to say that, um, to achieve. Just like to have an update from uh, uh, everyone. Um, I guess I'm gonna say something about my, my what I need to do, um, which is a new white paper. Um, I hope to, to get it done, get it out by early December. So that will be my part of the update. So, um, Andrew? Uh, yes. So uh, from our side, uh, we uh, are still working on uh, uh, the uh, tab for uh, the smart uh, contracts and for the digital identity. Uh, as we just uh, heard uh, before recording, uh, we're probably going to be ready to have the tabs integrated, uh, integrated uh, for uh, next uh, Tuesday. Uh, Time we are uh, uh, progressing towards integrating the MIT and the MST uh, tokens to be carried over in the new uh, version of the infrastructure, and um, the uh, also yeah testing everything uh, as well. We hope pretty soon to have the public beta test as well. So that's going to be very good for uh, our users to experience firsthand. Uh, what we are working on. And uh, although we're a bit uh, behind the schedule, uh, we will deliver it uh, in time. And also, just as <laughs> for you guys to know, I don't know if I sh we should say it or not, but we're working also on a video, which will help you understand better exactly uh, how the new infrastructure look. And we're going to kind of look a little bit of what is it now and what uh, is going to be in the future. So yeah, that's very exciting. And uh, we're working on that as well. And uh, that's our update. Yeah, let's hope to get this video uh, done by uh, in uh, by the end of this, 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 this month. I think uh, we need to show people that uh, what to expect for uh, from the new metaverse main chain. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it, it could, we can have a long, maybe three minutes video and we can cut it down to uh, 30 seconds and one minute version just for easy um, easy broadcast on Twitter. Um, yeah, then we have, a, we have a long one on, on YouTube, maybe three minutes. Yeah, we can have yeah. edit different, different, different versions, different length. Sure, sure, yeah. That's uh, that's doable. So, do we have the the uh, digital identity part uh, integrated yet, uh, Jorge? Maybe were you working on the digital identity uh, integration? Uh, it's uh, we are working. Uh, Razvan, can you say or Oli, you you want to talk about it a bit? Really, she's. Uh, yes, um, we have. We are still waiting. We are still working at the uh, interface, at the web interface. Uh, we have uh, already implemented uh, into the test blockchain the the uh, the, uh, the ID module, and uh, we, we are working at the, the front end uh, at the front end side. It would be good if we can point out uh, the relationship between the current avatar system and this new digital identity 
module. Maybe. Yeah, uh, I think so too. Maybe we, we cause um, I myself uh, not 100% uh, understand the difference between the current uh, ETP uh, digital identity system and the, the new the new uh, protocol ID protocol that we propose. So it's better that we have a, um, if you can have give us a quick demo, some some maybe uh, next week, because uh, I I'm the one writing the, <laughs> the the white paper, right? So I need to hundred percent understand. I, I think I understand quite a bit, but uh, I need to you know understand you know inside out to to be able to write it into the white paper. I can give you a document, uh, so uh, that will be better and easier. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. It would be also good if we can we can publish it. That's right. Um, let let me let me uh, read the document first. I like to edit it into uh, you know metaverse wording um, before we publish it. Okay, so Raz, you're gonna send uh, the document, uh, put it on uh, the Trello board. Okay. And uh, and once we finish the integration, then we have to uh, better define the relation with the existing avatars on the metaverse. And also we need to start thinking uh, the data migration already. The, um, the MST, MIT, and avatar migration from the old chain, uh, the current chain to the, the newly newly proposed chain. So I'm not saying that we need to start doing it, but we need to start, you know, uh, testing and try it out, and you know, have a plan, um, uh, have a testing plan for it. Uh, I think that's quite important. I'd like to have that um, have that. Uh, started out uh, thoroughly by the end of this, um, actually before Christmas, if it's possible. Uh, yes, we we touched, you know, briefly uh, on it uh, in the previous meetings. I'm not sure was the recorded or not the recorded one. And one of the the things which I was uh, like proposing is to. Uh, to have the users uh, during the transition at least, uh, uh, you know, provide a, uh, at least an email address. Uh, so we know, you know, kind of it's a manual transactions. So it's one to one sort of and capture an email address during the, the process. And I think Sven was discussing, was talking about having a, a auto automatic uh, transition, right? That would be the best if we can find some way to um, combine or to, to, to connect the two addresses, uh, the, the, the one that the user currently has and the new one on the new chain. It's not about address, address. it's about the, you know, the, the top words, um, uh, dynamic uh, words that is important. Or say, if right, we can right. share the same uh, private key, yeah. Yeah, but we have to, I mean, we, we are not able to generate the new address without the, at least uh, like, a, like a master public key. Uh, you know, so, so we don't know, we, we cannot initialize the new balance if we don't know the new address. So then it might, might be a, a pull mechanism in which the user generates the new addresses from his existing uh, mnemonic and then he has to do something or the wallet automatically will do something in the background to prove that uh, this wallet is the owner of, of those addresses that had this legacy MST asset. So that- uh, Yes. Okay, I gotcha. Yes. Well, I don't mind if it has to be a pull, pull request that, the, you know, that that's okay. Yeah, there are multiple options, but uh, this one would probably be the easiest way. 
Yeah, okay. Okay. You guys have any updates on, uh, I see here on the list, the light wallet also was on the list. Uh, yes, on the light wallet. So we are uh, working uh, like last time uh, we mentioned, but when we do a uh, major update of the light wallet, uh, still on the metaverse chain, on the ATP chain, uh, it will um, log out the users. So we will first release a, a version with the current uh, light wallet having a warning to say, okay, please make sure you have your 24 words before next update because you will be logged out. So you will need your 24 words again to log in. And then uh, I don't know how much time we want to give between the two, but maybe one month after we can uh, publish the, the newest uh, light wallet uh, that has a lot of changes. And uh, I think we could do it around the 15th of December or end of December to let uh, user enough time to, uh, if they don't have their 24 words, to move their ATP. But if they have their 24 words, no problem. They will just update the wallet and enter the 24 words and everything will work as usual. And we will uh, still only start that, with iOS. Some reason? Yeah, we will start with iOS first because uh, yes. on iOS uh, we have the problem that starting from December we will not be able to make any updates to the existing app because uh, the um, the framework we used has some legacy features that uh, Apple has disabled uh, starting from December. Yes, exactly. So that's why for for, for um, for the iOS app especially, it is very critical that uh, we get this message out before December uh, so that uh, in December we can then update to the to the latest version. And uh, by the way, we only need this warning on the mobile wallet, so Android and iOS, because on, the, on your laptop, on your browser, it will uh, not log you out. So we will be able to just uh, update directly to the new version and people will stay logged in their wallet. So it will be smoother. Okay, that's good. So as we said before, uh, this is gonna be all uh, like uh, inform the users uh, beforehand, right? Yes, and I think after that, we will be done with uh, Metaverse CTP uh, wallet and we, we can start to work on the, the substrate wallet. Okay, that's good. So you guys are right on track. Um, Michael, so we had the, the October uh, recap sent out, right? On, uh, I put it on Reddit as well. I saw it was on Medium. You put it on Twitter, on Facebook, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so Oli, you can do your magic on Facebook on that new posting. Can I have a little complaint here? I mean, the, the testnet Beetlejuice wasn't properly translated in the Chinese version. <laughs> oh, so. <laughs> it could be a fun translation, but it wasn't there. But that's fine. That's fine. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get it right next time. Okay, I'll, I'll take note of that. Um, I didn't do the translation there, so. Um... I'll look into that actually. And just also from my side, I think um, currently we're doing some research on the marketing side and we're planning to, you know, distribute all this news um, and make like a, uh, like a planned um, distribution for the community uh, in the coming month, as well as the November recap going to have a monthly report for November, for November. So all this will be aggregated into that written report as well. So please look forward to that. And if you're looking at this video, you're basically getting like a um, sneak peek already into what's coming. So that's great. Excellent. And you, you got a lot of work to do, uh, Michael, um, because um, when, when ETP mainnet, mainnet, mainnet switched um, before and after, 
I've, there are a lot of a uh, lot of marketing works that needs to be done, really. So it needs to be creative. You know, you know, let's talk more. I mean, everyone. Yeah. Uh, uh, we'll we'll talk offline next time, but uh, we propose like uh, you know a good solution for. It's, it's gonna need to be a big launch for sure because it's a big step uh, for the company. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's uh, let's definitely. Um, I'd be more than happy to discuss more with you guys and share share ideas so we can get this uh, really uh, like a blast off. You know when <laughs> everything launches. So. Be great. All right. There Anyone some, else? Some user complaints about about uh, the ETP swap mechanism from Ethereum to the ETP chain, and apparently now the functionality was removed from from that website. But uh, I think we should make it clear, like what the status of this uh, swap service currently is. That relay dot uh, MVS DNA dot info. Uh, it shouldn't be there at the first place. I think I never approved that. Um, so basically, I, I ordered them to take it down. Anyone that wants to uh, switch um, ERC20 to ETP mainnet or mainnet to ERC20 needs to go through either uh, the light wallet or go through uh, right DC. The light wallet currently doesn't have the, this function, right? Like from, from Ethereum back to, to uh, ETP chain. Then they should, they should go through uh, right DC. Okay, good. Yeah, no, uh, but then I think it, this should be announced because there were some users who were, who were confused about uh, about it. Well, the problem was really that really um, website was never announced either. That's the problem, and uh, the biggest problem is who actually controlled the private key of of that website. Uh, clearly, not me. Right? So, to me, it's dangerous. And the foundation is now controlling the, the, the private key or that, that the website. So I have to ask them to shut it down. I think it's good to have the service at some point, but. Uh, well, yeah, it, it, um, yeah uh, we're going to move it to move this functionality to do to GFNS. Yeah, that would be would be good option, but I, yeah, I, I still think we should make it clear that uh, you, the users should not should not use it because uh, from no, they, sh they should not use it because we the foundation has no control of that that that, that private key, so it's not irresponsible to say that we we don't um, we take no liability on that website, but but the current situation it, it is. I don't want to take the liability of that particular website because I have no, we have no control of that particular um, private key. So after we switch to uh, gene.fns, then we have we have control. I mean, gene.fns has control of the private key. Then that that should that should work. Yeah, right. But at least at least one user. Uh, found out uh, the functionality of the of the smart contract of the ESC twenty token, and uh, used the collect function directly. So we, even without the front end. I know. It, I, should we say it out loud here? But yeah, it works. The smart contract works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah. So let's find out the, the user and compensate them. We need to act responsibly. responsibly. Yeah, no, it is, it is already done, I think. Uh, That's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so the last, last thing I want is use the last uh, his or her assets. Let's not make, <laughs> let's not make these terrible things happen. But uh, Gene Finance will be having this uh, uh, 
exchange function very, very soon. What about those NFTs? Yeah, it's getting there. Uh, we'll, we'll have it uh, maybe next week. I, I, I'm not guaranteed, but they're testing, they're testing that uh, NFT already. Yeah, they're going to have this, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, Chinese Zodiacs. This, is the, this year is the uh, year of rat. So next year will be the year of ox. So uh, year of ox, it's a bull, bullish market, right? <laughs> We're going to have that uh, uh, NFTs created. And also the uh, regular Zodiacs as well. It's a very bullish market. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Lately. <laughs> yeah, I hope uh, ETP will go with the whole, whole market. Actually, I'm pretty sure it will after we switch, the, switch to a new mainnet. It's going to be in hard demand. I'm pretty sure. Yes, it will. I do. We're, we're very convinced it will. Okay, okay. Um, what else? Um, Eric, I could, um, maybe it's a little premature to share with the community, but I have some uh, feedback and experience on running smart contracts, ERC 20s and 721s. Uh, okay. I've been successfully been able to do that. Uh, and kind of write out a little bit of a process for how others can do that. And I've been setting up templates so we can have some templates. And I think most of my work at the moment has been with ERC 20 tokens. And really, if we're going to use them in a global business environment, which I think we're going to, of course, um, smart contracts, of course, always perform a step in a business process, only a step in a business process. So I'm doing a little bit of analysis of a few different businesses and the step that smart contracts and their blockchain could provide for them. Okay, but I thought our, our virtual machine are not uh, solidity compatible. It's a, it's a web assembly uh, virtual machine. How did you do the... No. I, I've been writing um, WebAssembly smart contracts, Eric. Okay, so it's a ESC20 compatible WebAssembly. Compatible, so, correct, correct. Yeah. Okay, great. Great. Okay. okay, gotcha. We will, uh, in the future, but this is a different uh, step to, to see, to, to, because the EVM module is implemented, but uh, we need to see about how how we make it uh, uh, operation operational with the uh, with this type but for solidity for advanced users for developers we can offer the possibility to take uh, solidity contracts and compile them uh, as i mentioned in uh, wasp so basically yes yeah okay so the E in ESC20 was for ETP. Yeah. I have something working, Sven. Like I said, maybe a little early to show, but I have something working. <laughs> you know, um, um, ETP is going to be a, the, the native token of our main chain, right? So you, you, should, you should already start to work on um, a wrapped ETP. Uh, Inside the inside the smart contract, right? so later on you can use it uh, uh, for you know for smart contracts. It, it should be easier. Just use WTP instead of a native ETP. I'm not sure if you get what I'm saying. Yes, it's yes. It's like Reb Ether. Yeah, it's like a W Ether. Sure, that's great. I guess that's it. 
any other updates? So next week, let's um, let's take a look at uh, digital identity. Uh, if you, if you guys can give us a, a demo, and also uh, I think we start talking about the phone note uh, uh, functionality, the new phone phone note functionality. Uh, let's continue the the discussion uh, next week. Um, yeah, so I think uh, Sven and uh, Oli will together have a design of the uh, the interface of uh, phone note. Right, I, I like to be part of the two. Then we can go through them uh, maybe next week. The phone note design. You mean the menu structure? Yeah, the the menu structure. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Shall yeah. we end the session? I think we're good, Eric. Yep, meeting adjourned. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you.